I grew up in Northern California. And so uh, I kind of grew up with this idea that wood is pretty sacred because of uh, the redwoods and the California oaks. And uh, I, never, I never thought about wood as a material, as a younger artist. Um, it wasn't until I moved to uh, upstate New York that I kind of fell in love with it. So a friend of mine took me to a mill in uh, western Massachusetts. And I started, there was just such, such an abundance of it in the Northeast, this indigenous, you know, this, these kind of indigenous forests. And I think I was able to kind of get some distance from California and, and how sacred trees are in California. I fell in love with this mill. I built this studio here and all of a sudden they became the buildings of my environment. I went to um, the Art Institute in San Francisco that had a real tradition of Richard Diebenkorn, David Park, the kind of Bay Area figurative school. But it wasn't until I was about 30 that I just started making sculpture. Mm -hmm. And the pieces that are included in your show, I kind of think straddle the line between sculpture and painting, especially in the planks that they occupy the floor and the wall. I had started as an abstract painter when I was in my early 20s. And, and there was so much environmental narrative in my work through my 30s and 40s. And when I started on wood, I, it didn't make sense to have a narrative on the wood, a, a nature narrative. It made more sense for me to look at artists like Frank Stella and Saul Lewitt and Agnes Martin, to go back to minimalism to kind of celebrate the wood. It's already pretty obvious that the wood is nature. And it seemed redundant to add more nature to it. And so abstraction made the most sense because to me it's an analogy for humanity pressing on nature. So I feel that the abstract paintings are um, a skin on top of the wood, like a highway on top of the earth. They're a, it's me kind of visiting.